Dear Maestra, we are very happy to see you again here in Sofia Philharmonic. What is the news about you, your career now after pandemic situation? Well, it feels like there's so much energy coming out of this pandemic. You know, I have invitations, so many orchestras and opera houses, so I'm thrilled. Um, and it's, it's quite exciting because a lot of these countries, they're asking at the last minute. For example, in Russia, already for next month, they said, uh, would you please come and conduct this? I'm glad I'm available, absolutely. Um, and of course, sometimes I'm not available because um, engagements, of course, usually happen uh, years ahead. But with this pandemic, everything started fluctuating in, in the extreme. So it's, um, it feels like a really energetic and a great time to be a performer because there's audiences that are craving, they're hungry for, for music, for being together in public, to experience the sounds and, um, and human emotion. I mean, it's, it's this, this unification that had for so long been uh, lacking in our lives as we were all separate. Isolated is the word. So this extreme from going from isolation to uh, harmony together, collaboration. It's, uh, I'm thrilled. And as you can see, I mean, I can't stop smiling. It's just so great to be working again. I did manage to work uh, throughout the pandemic, but not until nine months later. I was in New York City, literally from March, of 2020, of course, through December in New York City. So it was a very, very difficult time for New Yorkers, as you know, and um, of course it was difficult for everybody everywhere. But I finally got uh, the experience uh, to get on a plane and I went to the Paris Opera, but only for rehearsals, then they canceled, canceled the performances. Then I went to Salzburg, but only for a streaming performance at the Mozart Vocha. Then I got a vaccine, and then I went to Moscow at the Bolshoi, and I worked in um, uh, at the Juilliard School, and then I opened this season with the Bayerische Stadt. The Munich audiences are very enthusiastic to begin with, but after the pandemic, they were like an explosion of enthusiasm. Um, between, in the second act of Traviata, there's a pausa, a, a pause where the audience stays and they change the set, which lasts eight minutes. The audience applauded the entire time. Eight minutes. You know, it was, it was this incredible feeling because they were so happy to be back. Anyway, that's one of the beautiful experiences I had with the pandemic. Um, please tell us about uh, the about concert program that you will conduct here with Sofia Philharmonic Orchestra. You will conduct the uh, Symphony Poem Voltava by Smetana, Brookvalen Concerto the first and the first symphony of Dmitry Shostakovich. So it's a very romantic first half. The Smetana everybody knows, especially Europeans, because it's part of this national culture of Eastern Europe. Um, and it's, it's beautiful uh, countryside. Um, and it's also a piece that I think orchestras per perform quite a lot. So it, I can tell when I was rehearsing the orchestra, it's uh, like second nature to play this. So it's a very beautiful and wonderful piece to conduct. Um, I love conducting it. The Bruch. From a personal perspective, it uh, is quite, it's extraordinary. It's not a piece I've conducted a lot, but I know it from memory since I was a child because my father, he's a violinist, and he taught lessons at home. And I always heard the Brook Violin Concerto. I also play violin, so I would play a little. But Brook Violin Concerto, Everybody plays it, every youngster, every competition winner plays you know, when you're young. So it feels like it's really second nature to me as well. I, it, I, I think I conducted it only once before, but when I came back to study it for this concert, 
I knew it from memory. I didn't need to look at the score. It, it's a very strange thing when you learn something as a child, how it comes back. So that's just a, a little story for you. And this violinist, Sergei Kachatrian. No, we have never worked together, but it felt, today was the first rehearsal, and it felt like uh, we'd been working together forever. He's a fantastic musician, of course, a great violinist. And I like the way he interacts with the orchestra. He has an excellent sense of um, uh, finding colors with the orchestra and how he responds to what we're doing as well. That's not always the case with soloists. You know, they play their line and then they expect the orchestra to just be the accompaniment. But he's, he's really a, a great collaborative partner. And that means that uh, the music is a universal language. Yes, music is definitely the universal language. How about Shostakovich? What did you say? So Shostakovich, I was just doing another interview and I was asked everything but about music. And I said, you know, it's really great not to be asked about music because it's so difficult to express emotion and talking about music. So, but unfortunately, it's part of the job as a conductor, so um, it's easy for me actually to talk about Shostakovich because I love Shostakovich. Shostakovich is perhaps the, my favorite composer with Mahler to conduct symphonic repertoire. Shostakovich, for me, he has this incredible power, and I mean about his... Uh, the range of power he has, from soft, from slow, to the maximum fortissimo, fast. You have these extremes, but each one is as powerful as the other. Usually we associate power with loud and fast. The power from Chostakovich comes from inside, I think, as a person and in the music. And this for me is extraordinary because we know how much he suffered in life. What he lived through is extraordinary. So, with all that in mind, I came from a very peaceful childhood in Canada and seeing what people have lived through in their lives, it for me is the most fascinating aspect of, um, of learning in life and also to, as a reformer, try and get inside as deep as possible into the experiences of others, and especially of genius, like composers. Also, I work quite a lot in Russia, and I visited Shostakovich's home, his apartment, where he lived in Moscow. And I've seen so many of his objects, of his, of his life. I've read every single book about him. As the concertmaster and I were discussing, perhaps it's his best. I mean, he was so young when he wrote it, and everything is there. It's just, it, his, his mind was extraordinary, and it's so passionate, it's so beautiful, it's so clever, it's sarcastic, it's humorous, it's, it has everything. And I think it's a great virtuosic piece for the, the orchestra, because everybody has a solo. The first reading, you know, some of the players hadn't played it before, they were, oh, Suddenly they're nervous because that, they didn't know that little measure is a solo. And it's so important how Shostakovich he orchestrates the first symphony. So I can't uh, tell you enough how extraordinary it is. And of course, you know, compared to his eighth symphony, to the tenth symphony, you have these monstrous later symphonies, which I, of course, love to conduct as well. But the first is special because it was his first. And it has this sense of um, what was coming ahead in, in the life of this composer. You see how his mind was working. Mm -hmm. 
Do you see the future of classical music? I see the future of classical music based on everybody who's coming back to the theaters and opera houses and concert halls. People are starved for music. We must never take it for advantage. You are already a renowned international artist. What is your advice to young artists who are taking their first steps in their careers? Get ready for the punches. Be determined and be prepared. Work hard, work really hard. And whatever things are thrown at you in life, whatever criticism, make it better. Keep, keep determined. It's determination that I think most people who are successful are able to, to keep going. You have to live with the punches. I don't know if you say this in Bulgarian, but it's, you know, uh, people will, you'll be criticized, especially in the arts. Everybody has an opinion, so um, we have to be very strong. But that strength for me comes by studying being absolutely prepared. So there's no question. If I'm asked a question, why did you do this? Why did I have a reason? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you, Blagadaria. It was such a pleasure.